I'm going to give you the best scuba diving tips I have as a diving professional, which are actionable and give you the fastest results when scuba diving. So if you're new to scuba diving or looking to improve your diving, keep watching this video. Because you know why you're here, I put timestamps in the description for all the relevant parts, so you can go to it whatever you specifically need. However, if you just want a clear overview, keep watching right now, because I'm about to jump into it. Number one, that's one. <laughs> is ideal breathing, also known as slow diaphragmatic breathing. Why is this important? If you get this one down, you'll have better points of control, better air consumption, and all around you'll be more relaxed and more comfortable in the water. Okay, let's get to how you do this. Let's start with the slow part. What I want you to do is aim to breathe in and out for about four seconds. If you're not used to breathing slow, pretend you're breathing through a straw. That's a nice and easy way to control your breath in and out. It's also natural that your exhales are longer than your inhales. So if your exhale is five seconds or six seconds, that's completely fine. The main thing what you don't want to be doing is straining or feeling resistance when you're breathing. That's not good at all. Ideally, the longer you can do your inhales and exhales, the better. But don't worry if you do stick to the four seconds or even if it's slightly lower than that. The idea is that you are focusing on actually slowing down your breath. As in time, you will improve this and you'll find a good rhythm for yourself. Now, diaphragmatic breathing, also known as belly breathing. This is simply that you're using the full whips depths, depths of your lungs, and, and because of that, you're breathing fully down all the way to your belly. You know you're doing belly breathing by putting one hand on your belly and one hand on your top of your chest. When you breathe it in, you should feel your belly go out, and when you breathe out, you should feel your belly go in. You also should keep an eye on your top half of your chest. You ideally don't want to feel any movement in your shoulders and chest. That way you know you're doing shallow breathing, whereas if you're using just your belly going in and out, that's typically diaphragmatic breathing. Number two is dive lazy. You want to be doing less and doing it slower. Why is this important? The reason is that you're going to be using less energy and in result, breathing less air, meaning you're going to have longer dives and be more relaxed on your dive. Again, even though it's considered a sport, don't think you have to be doing it competitively and straining. That's not at all good diving. Good diving is lazy diving. So how do we do this? The best way is first to start with your top half of your body. What you ideally want to do is not use your hands at all. The only time you use your hands is for signaling. When it comes to turning or you going forward, that's all doing your fins. So one thing you can do with your hands is just have them over the top like this or crossing your arms. When you start with your kicks, you get your foot to kick nice and down, nice long legs, which are very strong and going back and forth. Make sure to use the full extension of your fins in each cycle. That way you're gonna get the most proportion out of each kick. But you don't need to be kicking constantly. Try slowing down between each kick. Even having a pause between each kick will allow you to glide. So kick, glide, kick, glide kick, glide. Point number three is some trim tips. This is going to reduce your drag in the water and you're going to have to use less energy to move forwards or any direction you want to in the water. So the first thing you need to do is make sure all your equipment is stowed away correctly. A good habit I have is every time I check my air I will also just make sure my octopus, also known as the alternate second stage, is in place and just make sure nothing's actually hanging off my body. You can also just do this for your buddies as well to make sure they're all good too. And you can make it like a little in sync thing between all of you guys, which that way means no one else is going to have bad trim. The next one is body position. Obviously, we're diving, we want that nice flat body position. We don't want to be in an angled yeah. way, we want to be nice and horizontal. However, for not people, this isn't the case when they are diving. When they dive, they usually find that their bottom heavy, which makes sense. Your legs have bigger muscles, and also now you've slapped some fins on there. So you're going to be more bottom heavy. An easy hack here is to use your hands. So as before, I told you to have one hand over the other hand. You're now going to want to extend them forwards. This way you'll actually move the body weight to the walls of the front and actually help balance you out. If that still doesn't do the trick and you're still bottom heavy, you can play around with your weight configuration. It doesn't always have to be all on the belt. You can play around, put on tank banks, and even some BCDs can put on higher parts of the BCD. So look into that if you can get customized or BCDs or just talk to your dive master or instructor on different configurations. Also, if you are in cold water, typically the problem's the way around. You're too top heavy and not enough weight on the lower end. A way you can correct this is get heavier fins or even get ankle weights, which will help balance you out again and get back to that horizontal position. Talking about configuration changes, point number four is do pointy checks. Specifically, whenever you change your configuration or are somewhere new, why is this important? Well, to start with overweighted, 
This means if you can save some pounds, it's gonna be easier to carry around the equipment without all the extra weight. It also means in the water, you're gonna to have to inflate less times to find your neutral buoyancy. And if it's too little, when you actually have the right amount of weight, you're gonna find it easier to stay down towards the end of the dive when your tank is more positively buoyant. Here is how to do a buoyancy check. At the end of your dive, when your tank is low on air, you want to be fully inflated at the surface. Put your regulator into your mouth and then take a big breath in and hold. You then want to deflate your BCD. If you are correctly weighted, the water should be at eye level. You then want to exhale and your head should sink below the surface. Take another breath in and you should return back to the water level with your eyes. Now, obviously, if you're underweighted, your eye level is going to be above the water. And if you're overweighted, you're going to have your eyes below the water level. It's important to then go to your logbook and then put in what your weight configuration was and how much you reckon you need for the next dive and adjust accordingly. Again, do this again with a new weight so you do on the follow-up dive. And if it's the correct amount, make sure you know that in your logbook. This is why logbooks are so important, as you can keep a record of what it is you will that dive and if it works. However, every time you do change exposure, so if you've gone from a three millimeter to a seven millimeter, you're obviously gonna need a lot more weights on you. Also, if your physiology changes, like you've put on weight or lost weight, you still might need to do buoyancy checks in the future as you might need more or less weights accordingly. Tip number five is to stay slightly shallower than the others. Why do you want to do this? It's going to help you stay within your limits and it's also going to help your air consumption, especially if you're a newer diver or you know you should actually lower air than the others in your group. This one's definitely for the people who are naturally heavy breathers. So even if you have applied the previous points on helping your consumption rate, you still might need an extra helping hand and just going about half a meter higher than everyone else will actually help you out quite a bit. Don't worry as well, you won't miss out on all the good stuff. You can still see every, everyone else is seeing. You're just gonna have slightly better air consumption. Staying within limits is really important. Just because you can go to 18 meters, doesn't mean you should go to 18 meters every dive. In fact, you should always want to be a little bit shallow of that. The reason is if you go beyond that depth, you'll no longer have your dive insurance to cover you. If you have an accident at that point, it's all out of your own pocket and your insurance won't pay you out. So please, please, please be safe as decompression chambers are not cheap. But number six, that's six by way in tech, <laughs> is always watch the pros. Pros mean the guides and actual fish in the water. The reason is these guys have more experience in the water than you. So they read the subtle changes that are happening in the water. Maybe that be like change of temperature, maybe that be change of currents. These guys will see it first and adjust to it. If you watch them closely and adjust your movements to do the same as them, whether that be potentially deflating if there's an upcurrent or maybe inflating if there's suddenly a down current, that can help you out and make you look like a bit of a pro yourself. With the fish, they always swim into the currents. So if you see all the fish swimming in one direction, you know the currents come from that way. And you can also see from how hard they're swimming into it from how strong the current will be. If the fish are scattered and swimming all in different directions, you know there's probably no currents. Point number seven, don't be afraid to pee in your wetsuit. This one might sound really silly and daft, but honestly, the way to think of this is you don't want to be uncomfortable on your dive. When you get become uncomfortable, that's gonna take a lot of your mental attention away from all the other skills you're still learning. And ultimately, if something does go wrong, you're gonna more likely become stressed even more so than you already are. And you also might have a panic happen as well. And this is where accidents happen in the water. How lame is it if you dive just because you need to hold in a pee? I'm just saying, not, not the way you wanna go really, is it? <laughs> just a side note, if you think the idea of peeing in the ocean sounds gross, just remember that 90% of it is just fish pee anyway. <gasps> I've got no figure to back that up, just head to can of me, and it's probably an easy way to just get over it yourself. People pee in the ocean all the time, fish pee in the ocean all the time, don't freak about it. But it just goes back to the point, plan your dive accordingly, and go to the toilet before going on the boat. That way then you don't have to worry about this as much. But if it happens, nature calls, go with the fly. Point number eight, prepare properly. This goes back to the prepare part where I just spoke about a little bit towards the end there. But this goes from a lot more than just getting your gear ready. It actually is about first preparing yourself. The first thing you should do if you want to go diving is check, are you fit and healthy? If you have a cold, it's going to be a lot harder to equalize because your sinuses are blocked. Sinuses, by the way, are the bits around your face, like this, here. And that's going to make it a lot more uncomfortable for you in the water when descending. Top tip as well, if you go to a hot country for your diving, please be careful with the AC. This is how people catch colds when you go into hot countries. They go from climates to what, 30 plus degrees to ones below 20 degrees. And that's such a change in temperature. It's what makes you catch a cold. So just keep this in mind that if you are going somewhere hot, maybe you want to have an AC not on as powerful as you could have it, or even have it off entirely and use fans instead. Ideally no alcohol 24 hours before you dive. I know what your divers are like though, so it's gonna be taken like a pinch of salt, but 
You can offset this as well by having more water as well. Make sure you're hydrated before the dive and after the dive. Next one is what you want to make sure all the equipment is there. That means your fins, your mask, all the things you need to complete your dive should be set up. And if you're using a dive bag, place something into your bag in a way that you get the things out first that you need to put on first. Things you need first at the top of the bag, things you need last at the bottom of the bag. Another tip is with your equipment, have all the straps ready to go. This means for your fins and your mask, have them in the right settings so you can just slide them on and off. This saves so much time on the boat and means you don't have any faffing around to do just before a dive, which can get you hot and bothered and stressed. And suddenly, again, make sure just the whole thing goes a lot smoother. And the final one is if there's a dive map or in the briefing there's a dive map, pay close attention to it. This lets you know what to expect on your dive, so you'll manage your expectations, but also mean you won't miss out on the good parts. It also means you can actually navigate properly so you see all the best bits of the dive. Point number nine, delay bringing the GoPro. I know a lot of you guys, when you go diving, you want to get those cool shots, you want to get all the fit footage. If you're a new diver, this is just one more thing to think about. And if you've already come to put mental space and think about your breathing, think about your trim, thinking about your buoyancy control, thinking about all these kind of things, how you're kicking, it's just one more thing what you've got to think about. And often with people, when they get a camera underwater, they just turn a vision on that. And all the fundamentals they've just been focusing on just go out the window and they lose all their awareness and they can be a big liability in the water. So please wait until you're a bit more comfortable in the water and you have a lot of these things just doing passively and not to think about it as much before you get the camera there. If you are desperate though to get photos when you go diving or videos, you can hire a photographer. Most dive schools or centers have photographers on hand. And if you worry about the cost of this, don't worry, you can actually share this with other divers in your group. If you split the cost between two or three other people, it suddenly becomes a lot more affordable. And trust me, you'll still get the same amount of great photos. Bonus tip as well, Get some pre-dive shots as well and post-dive shots. These are the ones that we do on the boat before we go out. They just look really, really badass. It also helps if you know what kind of shots you want and show that to the photographer so they can ideally do it. Don't just expect them to know what you want in the water or on the boat. Speak to them beforehand, come up with a plan, and that way then you both are very coordinated and get some great images out of it. Point number 10, we got there in the end. And that is to practice, practice, practice. I know this one's super cliche, but trust me on this one, it, you won't be an expert after just doing your open water course. It might not even be after you're advanced either, depending on how many dives you've had in between the, now and then. It's reckoned when talking to lots of dive professionals, I think it's around 12 dives for you to actually become comfortable in the water usually. And a bit more than that to even get to the point where it just becomes passive, like you do all your fundamentals automatically. That means your ideal breathing, that means your trim position, it means you have your buoyancy to control down. All these things, they come with time and the best way is to get practice. Now, the thing I'm gonna point out here is don't just solely do courses to get your practice. Make sure you spend some time just doing fun dives. These are dives when the objective is purely just to have a fun time. That way then it gives you a stress-free environment to actually work on your skills. It also means when you go back to your courses that you're going to be a bit more experienced then. And that means the instructor can give you more advanced tips rather than having to just help you with the basic stuff which you probably could have got down on your own. And those are my 10 top tips for scuba diving. Let me know, which one do you think is the most helpful or which one do you need the most help with? Also, if any of the questions, please do put them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to read them all and give some responses to how to help you out with this. And if you found this helpful, please tickle that like button. And it would even feel like subscribing if you want to see more content like this. I've been Noah Tom and hope you have some great dives, guys.